We're here at Kajona Valley with Race to the Sky and I've got Paul from Possum Ball Motorsport here and Possum Ball Motorsport this weekend are campaigning a WRC or well, ex-WRC rally car, uh, one of Possum Bourne's or Possum Bourne's latest rally car, the last one he ever drove and at the moment it's being run by Alistair McRae. Uh, this is anything but a normal WRC rally car. Uh, it's now punching out 850 horsepower. We thought we'd take a, a minute just to chat uh, to Paul and get a bit of a lowdown on what makes this car tick. So uh, first of all, there's probably not a, a huge number of WRC cars out there, particularly not in New Zealand. Um, how did that car come to, to be here? Uh, basically, when uh, uh, 1998, the um, New Zealand QH Kangas, he um, had the car and he crashed it, so it came availability to um, Possum, so we brought it and uh, basically built out of our spares packages what we've got the best we could for what we could for this event so and then we ended up building a new engine and then um, basically from we just went from there onwards you know so it was uh, pre it's a pretty cool car really. Now, even at the WRC level uh, the engines are restricted with an inlet restricted the yep. turbocharger so that really ultimately decides how much power the engine can make. Here we're talking about an unlimited class car, the sky is literally the limit. Yep. So when you're looking at uh, setting the car up for an event like this, uh, what changes do you make from WRC specification to unlimited race to the sky hill climb competitor? Um, not a lot of difference really at the end of the day. It's um, We normally tend to run a little bit softer because the road's not rough here so you get more traction but other than that it's pretty much the same as a rally car. Um, obviously a lot more horsepower to deal with so um, yeah. In terms of that horsepower what did you do uh, to the engine to, to get it making 850 horsepower? Um, well basically the engine is a WRC engine like it's a gas ring um, engine with rubber o-rings on the heads and stuff so it doesn't actually have a head gas because it's such it has a uh, gas ring which compression blows it up, the more compression you put into it the more it blows up the more it seals. So you have that and then um, the heads are obviously been got bigger heads on, bigger porting, bigger valves, uh, obviously bigger cams, but mainly the biggest the biggest gain is the turbo, a bigger turbo. Now I'll just take a step back because you mentioned gas rings and for some of the audience out there who aren't familiar with that, what you're talking about there is a gas ring that sits in the top of the bore and actually seals between the yep. bore yep. and the cylinder head so that's taking uh, the place of the head gasket and uh, particularly at the high boost levels you guys are running that's a more reliable system, yep. that's what you're talking about? Yeah it's just a lot more reliable so basically it's just a ring which is hollow and it's got like four little tiny holes in it and as the compression goes into it it blows it up and seals it so um, pretty unlikely to blow a head gasket really. Now in my own experience with high boost uh, net, uh, turbocharged import style motors that, that's really the weak point is holding the, the cylinder heads on them yeah. that's kind of the limiting factor of how much power you can make. Yeah. Okay so we've talked about the engine obviously getting to 850 horsepower uh, am I right in saying WRC spec would have been around about the 350 mark no, of it? No, about 300 maybe 310 Okay, so going from 300, 310 horsepower all the way to 850, it's a little bit more than uh, just chucking the restrictor in the bin and upping the boost level. So what other things have been been done there? Uh, well, the, as far as the running gear goes, it's exactly the same as WRC. We haven't changed. All we've changed is made it lock centre diff and lock rear diff because that gearbox originally is active centre diff, front diff and rear diff, so it's fully active. So we've changed the rear to, act, uh, to locked and the centre to locked just because you, you just physically can't hold it because of the power, so that's the only really difference. In terms of that, the, the active uh, dip differentials that they were running in WRC, okay, obviously you can't run them with that much power as you say, um, is that much of a disadvantage to you? When, when they were running those active differentials, how much of an advantage is it to the car? Uh, well, the, the beauty about it is, is you've got flexibility, so you can write programs and like hairpins for instance, you can pull the handbrake and it disconnects the centre diff, just a bit like a six speed Subaru type thing. Um, but we don't have that, but on these this event, there's not really that tight of hairpins. You just basically throw it at the corner and that's the way it goes really. So it wouldn't be so good if you're in a rally type environment with very, very tight corners? No, no, not really. Like lead foot for instance, there's a couple of very tight hairpins and it was locked diff there for that, but we struggled a wee bit there. But the problem is it just can't hold it, physically hold it, it's not designed for 800 horsepower should we say. Understandable really. Uh, talking about uh, that power again, the, the turbocharger setup, which is one of the things I was getting at before, that's obviously been changed, can you tell us what you've done with the turbo? Uh, basically we've just taken, we had a Garrett originally and we've taken that off and put a twin scroll um, Borg Warner on it, 
and um, which is a twin scroll. So um, yeah, it just comes on so much earlier and just it's just better all around really. And being that it's still based on a WRC engine, are we still at two litre? Yep, two litre, yep. And with 850 horsepower, I know my own experience with uh, the Subaru engines getting uh, a good boost response is very difficult, even at much more modest power levels. Yep. What sort of a usable power band have you got with the engine? Um, it sort of comes on, most probably about four and a half would be full boost, and then right up to like nine grand, so we can tend to rev it quite hard this thing. That's quite a wide power band for, for that sort of uh, engine. Uh, what boost level are you running to get to that 850 horse? Uh, like low boost, we've got a boost trim switch on it which low boost is about maybe 1.7 bar up to 3 bar. And um, is Alistair using all of that 3 bar today? Uh, no, he's on about, we've got from 1 to 9 on our setting so we're about 6 or 7 at the moment so we'll just slowly, tomorrow, the last one will be on 9, I guarantee it. <laughs> uh, fuel, what are you running for fuel? Uh, E85. Uh, the electronics package in the car, what have you actually got controlling that? Is it still WRC spec equipment there? Um, the, the stuff that's left in there from WRC is the uh, gearbox ECU and logger, which is GEMS. And then uh, obviously we've got the Motec M880 and with the Motec dash as well. So we've got three or four options of logging, shall we say, to go through. <laughs> And what are, what are you actually looking at in that logging? Can you tell us what channels you're actually logging and what's critical to analysing the performance of both the car and the driver to improve it? Well the main key here is, um, the, well, the thing we've always struggled with is temperature. So um, obviously water temperature and oil temperatures are quite crucial. And then um, obviously fuel mixtures we're always keeping top from, because obviously the altitude from top to bottom is different. So occasionally we've got to do little changes there. But just generally everything, we look at everything. So. If anything's not in the window, then we've got to look at it, obviously. Look, it's, um, it's an impressive car, and it's great to get a little bit more insight into what makes it tick. Uh, thanks for chatting to us, and we wish you, all, you and Alistair yeah. all the best for the rest of the weekend. No worries, thanks for everything.